Exploding, long distance, shut up, hold on, shh. <laughs> oh, the phones are everywhere, god damn it. Yeah, they uh, are. Yeah. Hey, what's up, this is Ed. And this is Carl. You know what's really bad, I almost said this is Mike. I almost did too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike, um, mentally, just had to fill it in. Yeah, but, I was uh, just like, wait, who's next? Oh, it's not me yet. Yeah, it's totally messed up, the... You know, three is the magic number. <laughs> but but uh, not again for this week. So we're down a man. Like bitch. Yeah. Can't, can't catch a break around here. So. Yeah, I know. I know. And maybe next week I'll have a, you know, crisis or something. <laughs> Make one up. You know what? You should just like to be like, that's not fair. Everyone else is getting the attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go totally prima donna next week. Yeah. Oh, my God, you guys. Just deal. <laughs> So hopefully, uh, I mean, hopefully the way we have it set up, it uh, should just kind of take care of itself, you know? Mostly, yeah, at least the recording. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So. But, uh, well, how was it, what was it, uh, how, how was last week's show since you were back to being a listener and not a, a producer of, <laughs> as, you, as you handle the video elements? I honestly, like, I was about ready to start editing, like, new video of myself in, like, recording it. And then, like, uh, cutting in and be like, these motherfuckers are wrong. This is oh. really what's down. <laughs> oh, don't spoil it anymore. Just next time, just drop that in. Just you know, reaction shots. <gasps> Bullshit. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, it was really fun. It's, it's like going back to the old days of being a listener. And I actually, it was because everyone was talking about it. Like, what's what's the, uh, the topic on, on this week's show? And I, I don't know, other than Star Wars, I don't know what they talked about. I haven't listened to it yet. Yeah, so, yeah. It's kind of fun to go into it not knowing what to expect. So, cool. Yeah, I I enjoyed it every time. Uh, well, the few times that I wasn't able to make it since uh, I produced all the old stuff. But I mean, that'd be cool. I'd be totally comfortable with you guys uh, handling it now. <laughs> and uh, seeing what surprises await the next day. <laughs> it's it's fun because like, and especially like when Mike talks about you, not really realizing that like the two of us always edit the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get this out later. But uh, listen, so when uh, Ed said to me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> cut that it's out. great. Uh, it's cool. Oh yeah. yeah. So tonight is uh, tonight is Sunday, and Sunday is television night in America. Oh boy, is it! Like, there's for me, Sunday's a really loaded night because, uh, of course, you have like all the animation going on. Because uh, you got like Bob's Burgers and Family Guy, if you still watch that, I kind of hit and miss on that. But you know, American Dad and all that stuff. Then Cosmos. But then this time of year, there's something bigger. There's something so much more majestic than those simple shows. Something, life. something better from oh. a better land of not basic cable, of pay cable. Oh, so not the Good Wife. No, not oh. the Good Wife. No, oh, fine. Yes. Game of Thrones. Yes, yes. I am in there. Hooked like the fish. Of mm. the... I can't. Uh, see, I have, I have so much... Uh, I have more Lord of the Rings in me than uh, uh, Game of Thrones, so sometimes I get my references confused. <laughs> me too, and I, I find myself calling it uh, Lord of the Rings a lot on accident. Uh -huh. That's just because I'm kind of an idiot. And I mix stuff up in my head when I'm talking. So no, we're getting older. We're becoming our parents, whether we have kids or not. So we yeah. say things like that. Exactly. So. Only I've been doing it for 30 years. I've been a parent for 30 years. <laughs> like I started talking like an idiot, like from day one. I've never had that. Like I had maybe like one year when I was like 22 where I didn't speak like an idiot, but then it just like went downhill. Like I'll from. The, mm, uh, so. <laughs> 
I, I forget what it was yesterday, but I was standing behind my mom, and I tried for three minutes to say a word, and I couldn't get it out because my speech impediment was working out. I'm like, and it just turned into mumbles every time I tried to say it. Then finally she just had pity on me, and she just said the word for me. I was like, thanks. <laughs> I just was rejected it. Cin- was it cinnamon or elephant? It was, uh, oh, I can't even remember what it was. It started with an F, though. It was like familiarize. I think it was, uh, it was something like that, and it was yeah. really hard. And I was just stumbling all over it, and it was bad. So. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, God, it's just, it doesn't get any better. you got to stay on top of that stuff. Well, what's, um, what's funny about uh, getting into Game of Thrones, I got, like, two shows in, and there's just so many people to keep track of. Even for tonight, I went ahead and printed it out. Uh, I do have a cheat sheet for myself. And it, it, it doesn't make it any better when, like, people from a certain family tend to be named similar names. I'm like, yeah. oh my god, the Lannisters are a joke. But what I found that I had to do um, was watch it with uh, subtitles. Because you've got people from a fantasy land talking about fantasy places with fantasy people, and they're all speaking with the full gamut of English accents. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know what the hell they're talking about or who. And what, who why did you kill him? I don't know what he said. No idea. So, yeah, um, yeah it's a lot well, easier. And that's the thing is neither one of us read the books, and I think that's like a service that people that read the books get is that they always see the name. So it's easier yeah. for them to place it, you know, and they identify characters with a name rather than the visuals. So for me, like, whenever I'm talking to my mom who's read the books, I'll be like, oh, you know, the one star kid, not Bran. <laughs> yeah. You know, and she's like, oh, and then she'll say blah, blah, blah. And, like, she just said this the other night. I've already forgotten his name. I don't know. Yeah, are you talking about Rickon? So, yeah, Rickon, that's it. Huh? That's why I keep it right here in front of me. <laughs> so so f- tonight, if you hear me say not Bran, I'm speaking about Rickon. <laughs> <laughs> not, not. Brand blonde kid, fat kid. <laughs> like curly hair, not a bastard. Rob, yeah, that's him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, curly hair bastard, right. Jon Snow. Got there it. you go. <laughs> so going forward, everyone, just to let you know. Spoiler alert! This is mm. we're gonna be uh, getting into season three because uh, that's what's going down right now on the HBO. So uh, yeah, that's it. So don't watch it if you haven't uh, caught up yet. Mm-hmm. That's it. Okay, Fair disclaimer. Warning. Yeah. So what a what a juicy season. It's not even done yet. Yeah, it started off pretty strong. Um, two episodes in, and you already had a major death. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm confused which one because there's so many. Yeah. Uh, but I think the one that probably the most important one to me, and this is probably the only character that I actually looked up willingly to spoil his fate. Because I was like, oh, this motherfucker has to die. Yeah. There's no way this motherfucker lives through the story. And, of course, yeah. I'm talking about Joffrey. Uh, oh. oh, Joffrey, Joffrey. <laughs> Adios, motherfucker. Oh, man, it was so good. And, like that, like I said, that's one of the only things I've spoiled from the, the Game of Thrones. I had to look it up. I was like, this guy has to die soon. There's no way he stays alive. So... Yeah, I mean, there's there's no telling with the show. I mean, you get people that and we we'll get into this later, but there's people that you fall in love with that will suddenly die. So, mm-hmm. I it, because of that lesson, I was like, here's a guy who's begging to die a horrible, horrible death. You just don't know who's gonna pull the trigger. Yeah. Um, and it would just totally make sense to me that he's the fucker that will live up until like the big finale. Like just being shittier and shittier. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> because, you know, and that's the funny thing, is, like, there's so many shitty characters in this this story. There's mm-hmm. so many bad people. There, the, the bad people definitely outnumber the good people. And it's just funny to see people say that, like, oh, they're, they're being bad about, like, this type of person. Like, oh, they're being down on women. They're being down on people of color. They're doing this, that, and the other. I was like, you realize that everyone in that show is shitty. Like, this is like a real cross-section of humanity here. You know, it's like, oh, well, you know, so-and-so almost got sexually assaulted. I was like, there's a dude who got his wang cut off last season. Yeah. Like, it's clean cut off. But what's... There's bag going around everywhere. (laughs) Yeah, there's there's a lot of 
there's there's people that are despicable. There's very few that maintain their integrity through the show, um, including the manhood type integrity. But um, but then there's you have characters that that will change, and I mean that's the most important thing to a story is that you, your your characters have to change um, for the worse or the better. And um, I mean for the if, one of the best examples is. Uh, Jamie, Jamie Lannister, mm -hmm. who is who looks not only looks like Starbuck, you know, <laughs> Dirk Benedict, but he's just this smooth, smug, you know, he's the man. He's he's in the family, the man. He's got it all. He's got the looks. He's banging his sister, and nobody cares. Like he can do no wrong until he is laid low. And even through that, he maintains that he is such the biggest cock on the planet. And I uh, can't wait to show it to you. But then, you know, things changed for him. So now he's back. And um, you, can, you, can, you can tell, like, it's, everything is different. Everybody's there. That, every, for, the, for everybody that stayed, it's pretty much the same. But he's changed. And he can't just jump into, um, I'm, I'm the old cock of the walk, and I'm, I'm the big man on campus. Because, yeah. I mean, everybody's reminding him how much he's not. Yeah, and I think that's really interesting because this season's really showing how even though King's Landing is remaining the same, you know, it's the same old political bullshit, like families fighting with families and political marriages and everything like that, there's these certain characters that are going off and having these really big character arcs that are really changing. Jamie's definitely one of them. Uh, Jon Snow, if you look at, like, Jon Snow, like, now compared to, like, season one when he left you know like the Stark family and went off to the Night Watch and everything like that it's it's interesting to see these characters that have really really changed um, mm. and then in some ways some characters haven't really changed like uh, Tyrion even though he's become a little bit more responsible and everything he's still essentially the same charismatic like charming smart intuitive guy that he's been the entire time you know, it's just that he's the only one in that family that's ever stuck to anything like a code of, like, moral ethics. And uh, it's something yeah. that's a constant for him, and it's and everything around him is changing. And it's just really neat. Right, but I think where, where he's changed is that he's chosen... He's always been intelligent. He's always been, you know, compassionate to a degree, but um, he's always uh, kind of... You know, it's like, well, if they're going to call me a shitty imp and make sure that I have a shitty life, I'm going to enjoy it as best I can. I'm going to drink as much as I can. Mm -hmm. I'm going to party. Um, he's, he, he's, he was the spoiled kid. Nobody wanted him anyway, so fuck it. He's got a free pass. But since he started getting kicked around for real, like politically especially, mm -hmm. um, he his his integrity is still there, but he has chosen... Um, He's, he's, he's chosen to, to use this power, um, not necessarily for good, that's, that's too cliche, but he's become almost like a, a civil servant in a way. Yeah. So once he was given power, he's like, oh, well, let's see if I can really do something that's not shitty because that's what my family does. Let me try and make their impact on the world less. Yeah. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's like he's the only one in the entire family taking the job seriously. <laughs> for real, for real. Everyone else is like, what's in it for me or what's in it for my family? Or you yeah. know, He's the only one, it seems like, he's one of the few characters that goes out there and seems to try to make a difference. And, it's, and I'm really liking, especially in like the last episode or two, once Jamie's come back, and to see like Jamie as a changed character interacting with Ty uh, Tyrion again. Yeah. Uh, to see the two of them as brothers, and you know, like that scene in the dungeon was really, really well written and really well acted. I really yeah. enjoyed that. It was really nice to see those two, uh, you know, just be brothers and like be honest, like because that's the thing is that family's never had a lot of honesty, and to have those two characters be honest together was just really fun. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, you can't deny Peter Dinklage as an actor. Uh, just. The guy's been amazing right out the gate, and uh, I'm so happy that this role came along uh, that allows him to not just have a job, <laughs> a steady job, mm -hmm. uh, but to, to kick ass and have such a juicy character uh, that, that he can just completely walk around in and uh, really almost become like a... Um, uh, like a, like a, like a uh, 
like a, like a morality anchor almost. Mm-hmm. Like he's the sense of reason. Of all the people, he's the sense of the sense of reason. He is the morality uh, yeah. of of he's the decent one in in all in this world of assholes. But you know, it's it's kind of interesting because he is that character that kind of walks in both worlds. Because he is from this world of excess and privilege and everything, but he's also like at the very bottom rung of that world because he's the unwanted son. He's the the one that has the physical like quote unquote disability. You yeah. know, he's not like he's not Jamie. He's the one that killed the mother coming out. That sort of thing. You know, it's like it's like he's the one that no one likes, so he still gets shit on. So he's like the the very like bottom rung of the, of, of a golden ladder. You know. <laughs> yeah. But isn't it interesting that since he is the rock of of good, uh, better morality, the better side of humanity, um, that he's the smallest, mm-hmm. that he is the one that gets shat on. So you have these good-looking, tall, attractive, great fighters, rich people, who are complete assholes and are killing each other off. Whereas, you know, and, and they're doing horrible things to each other, whereas he's moral, he's basically just trying to do the right thing all the time, drunk or not. I mean, he was drunk off his ass on his wedding night, and he did not have sex with his new teen bride. He's yeah. like, that's not, I do not plan to do that. That is not my goal, to have sex with you. Well, if you ask me to, well, you know, I am your husband, but <clears throat> yeah. passed out, you know? Exactly. Um, so there was way too much season four to talk about uh, in tonight's show as we planned. So uh, yeah, let's let's come back tomorrow and uh, just keep going. Yes, I agree. Yeah. That sounds awesome. like a good idea. Good. But until then, feel free to visit our website, vorradio.com. Uh, from vorradio.com, you can actually get connected to our Republicom. Call it at 407-409-8749. Two to three minute limit, no licensed music, please. Uh, or if you'd rather, you can actually give us an email at voiceofrep at gmail.com. Send us an MP3 audio or a text email. It'll get read or played on the show. Um, you also have links there for our Facebook group. Come join the Vorons over at the Vorum. Get in on the discussion. All the hosts are pr- rather active there. Mike, eh, but the rest of us are definitely active. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, Mike, Mike understands. Uh, you know, hardness makes uh, a beard. <laughs> I'm a little too caffeinated. Um, Mike understands. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> well, see that, that to to elaborate on that, Mike, he's more quality over quantity. He comes in, he hits it hard, and then he leaves. So. Yeah, but you know, it's, he gives you butterfly kisses on the way out. So that's right. Okay. Slap that's on the ass. Oh yeah, that's the caring. You know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, cool. So we'll be back tomorrow. More Game of Thrones. Yes. So until then, may the force be with the uh, uh, smooth, smooth.